We are living through a very tough time to be a child. Or to be more specific, it's a tough time to be a kid for two years now. The pandemic has derailed what childhood is supposed to be. It's certainly taken a toll on the emotional well-being and mental health of our kiddos. We're going to talk solutions next. Last month, the Surgeon General of the United States issued an unusual warning, sounding the alarm about what he deemed a mental health crisis among America's youth and teens. Things got even worse, having to return to classes in the middle of the Omicron surge caused even more anxiety for a lot of students. So the question becomes, what can you as a parent do? Well, we turn to Dr. Michelle Nealon, the president of the Chicago School of Psych Professional Psychology. And this is one of the people we love to turn to with mental health conversations. Uh, good to see you. And I think it's fair to say still Happy New Year. We're still in January. Um, obviously, anxiety is high. And but I'm, I'm, we're specifically talking about our kiddos, the return to class when all of the messaging about the dangers of COVID has really made it into the way in, in, into their brains. They know the danger and yet we're sending them back to school at that time. It must be very confusing and anxiety feeling for some of our kids. It sure is, Michaela, and always so wonderful to see you. You as well. You know, this is real. As an expression you used last time we chatted, Michaela, this is real. To put in context why the U.S. Surgeon General is raising the alarm here, there are about 8 million children, our children, living every day with a mental illness. And get this for some sobering stats related to how they really are doing. During the pandemic, we have seen a 24% increase in emergency room visits related to mental health for our 5 to 11 year olds. My God. 5 to 11. And for our 12 to 17 year olds, Michaela, that tops 30%. Even more sobering, there has been a 50% increase in young girls expressing or attempting suicide. My God. 50% increase, and that's 4% for boys. So this is real stuff. Yeah. This is not about kids being kids. Yeah. This is not about back to school kind of, you know, Jitters. concern. Right. This is real stuff. So, so Michelle, let me ask you about what that looks like because i think we've all had to get used to all of us feeling a bit off in the last two almost going on three years now so we've noticed our kids are changing we noticed our how we react to scenarios are changing what is a normal reasonable change and what should we be on the lookout when i think five to eleven mm -hmm. i don't even know how you would assess what, what is dangerous in a 5 to 11 year old? How, do, how does it first manifest and how does it first get to a point where it's raising a flag for a parent? Yeah, fantastic question. And children let us know what we have to look for are changes in their behavior that happen more days than not okay. in what they are doing in how they are feeling, so the emotional part, and then how they are thinking and what they are thinking. Mm. So when it comes to anxiety, it's different than stress. Yeah. It's in that it happens more days than not. Anxiety is all about worry, 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 this perpetual feeling of worry. So kids will tell us they're scared, they're afraid, they're uncertain. Kids will show us in their behavior. This is where we start seeing for younger children. They're more irritable. They're worried about separating from their parents, maybe more temper tantrums, even some acting out physically. For the older kids, the teenagers, withdrawing to their room, not seeing their friends, moody, grumpy, fighting back, just seem to be totally off. And then in both cases, for children and teenagers, they will tell us, what if is what they will say a lot. What if, what then? So looking for the changes for those answers, in those categories. Yeah. So, okay, now the inclination for a parent that hears this is, okay, I got to check in on my kid more often. But if we also know, especially with those older teens, if we start, you know, are you okay? What's going on? If we start peppering them, they, they're going to further withdraw. So, so in our search for answers and to reach out to them, we may be pushing them away. How can we better that communication at such a tough time? 
Yeah, so again, you know, I've got one of those 16, almost 17 year olds that I get the one words these days. How are you? <laughs> Fine. How are things at school? Fine. Why do you want to know, etc. Our job as parents is to stay attentive, is to recognize that anybody's child, mine included, can be feeling the struggle uh, of what's going on right now. So what we can do is, even though we might get the one word answers or the brush offs or even, you know, mom, you're such a pain. Our job is to keep asking the questions and to show them, keep the structure in place, mm -hmm. keep the channels of communication open, keep information away from them that is not age appropriate mm -hmm, or is just mm -hmm. too much at the moment. And most importantly, Michaela, when we are recognizing that suddenly they're not talking to us, they're not talking to friends, their grades are dipping, that is the time that we don't just rely on ourselves, that we reach out and we find a mental health professional. Yeah. yeah. You know, we know the pandemic didn't create this problem. There have been kids that have been struggling for some time. This isn't new. It has worsened it, but it is definitely not new. That's correct. One in six children in the United States lives their life with a mental health issue. Over 50% of adult mental health problems have set in before a child is 14 years old and 75% by, the by the time that they're 24. So this is not new. It's just been exacerbated because of the uncertainties, yeah. the social isolation. You know, children need to be at school. And I know that's a provocative issue right now, but they need to be there because they're with their friends. They have after school programs. Their They've structure. got the structures they need. Yeah. And yeah. for children yeah. that really have special needs, it's at school that they are accessing those special exactly. needs in many cases. Well, mom, I send you a big hug for those tough days because I know, I know it's real. That struggle is real. Trying to get a word, more than one word out of a teenager is, is challenging. But I'm, I'm glad you're giving parents some tools and some ideas on how we can prevent it from getting worse and, and the signs to watch for. Dr. Nealon, you're a treasure. Thank you so much. You take care. And for more information uh, on uh, the work that Dr. Nealon does, uh, foxla.com slash links.